We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. After the break, with a generator bypassing the use of fuel, oil or batteries, Malawian innovator electrifies homes amid skepticism from experts. Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. A secondary school dropout from rural Malawi has brought electricity to his community using what he says is a groundbreaking air power generator bypassing use of fuel, oil or batteries. Experts have questions about how the system works, but Malawi's government is pledging support. Lamek Masina reports from Doha district. What if the future of energy isn't in billion-dollar labs, but in the dusty back streets of rural Africa in Malawi? The video you just finished watching is the proof that Western mainstream media is anti-African progress. Why this groundbreaking invention never get aired in Western mainstream media says a lot. African and West and impossible coexisting together in future. I will be unpacking the shocking reality about Ernst Andrew that makes this teen who powers a village with thin air a genius. Forget the headlines and experts. Something world-changing is happening. This isn't just about technology, it's a revolution of the human spirit. Meet Ernst Andrew, a teenager from Malawi, electrifying the world using nothing but air. He's challenging the Western education system with every volt he generates, proving that true power comes from a spirit that refuses to be extinguished. This is the story of how one boy, armed with junk parts and an unbreakable will, is rewriting our future. Imagine being a kid full of dreams, your mind racing with possibilities, your heart set on a future you can almost touch. But then, reality hits. Your family simply can't afford the school fees. The doors to education close, not because you lack ambition, but because money stands in the way. Labeled a failure by others, Ernst Andrew faced a challenge far bigger than just missing classes. His entire village was drowning in darkness, both literally and figuratively. No electricity meant no light to study by, no power for businesses to thrive, and no way for children to chase their dreams after sunset. There was no connection to the outside world, no way to call for help, no news, no entertainment, just silence and shadows. The darkness became his teacher, showing him that the need for power was about more than just light. It was about hope, opportunity, and dignity. So Ernst started tinkering. He gathered scraps, old wires and broken electronics, piecing them together in a tiny workshop, driven by a vision no one else could see. He wasn't just connecting wires, he was building his own education from the ground up, learning through trial and error, fueled by curiosity and necessity. Years passed, and his invention slowly came to life. The generator began to hum, and for the first time a small light bulb glowed in the darkness. Soon, lights flickered on in homes across the village. People could charge their phones, connect with loved ones, and see a future that was once hidden in the dark. Smiles returned to faces, and hope cut through the darkness like a beacon. Then. The school that once expelled him faced its own power crisis. Desperate, the principal reached out to Ernst for help. The irony was impossible to ignore. The very system that had turned him away now needed his expertise, his invention, his power. Ernst returned, not as a student seeking acceptance, but as the engineer and innovator they desperately needed. He powered the school, bringing light and possibility to a place that had once left him in the dark. The dropout became the master, the rejected became the rescuer, and Ernst's light shone brighter than ever before. When the system rejects you, you can either conform or create your own path. Ernst chose invention over education, solving real-world problems instead of chasing credentials. He saw education as a game of memorization, not a path to revolutionary thinking. Guided by ancestral knowledge, he tapped into a resilient source of power. His powerless village became a beacon of possibility. The first light bulb he powered was a declaration of independence. Ernst brought light, opportunity, and hope, raising the quality of life for everyone. His workshop became the new school, teaching that you don't need permission to solve a problem. Ernst's success is a testament to the untamed power of the human spirit. In a world where English is the language of power, where success is often measured by fluency in Western tongues and the ability to navigate global systems, there are those who communicate in ways that transcend words. Ernst Andrew speaks a more universal language, energy. While he may not know the words, he understands the forces that shape our world at the most fundamental level. He communicates with frequency, voltage, and current, understanding the invisible dance of electrons intuitively as if he were born with this knowledge flowing through his veins. 
This challenges the arrogance of the Western intellectual tradition, which often assumes that knowledge must be written, codified, and spoken in English to be valid. Enners proves that true understanding can be accessed through intuition and ancestral knowledge, drawing from a well of wisdom passed down through generations, not just textbooks. He listens to the materials, the air, and the flow of energy, tuning into the subtle signals that most people overlook, letting the world itself teach him. His process is guided by his ancestors, whose presence he feels in every spark and every hum, reminding him that he is never truly alone in his work. This is a form of intelligence our worldview often refuses to acknowledge. While skeptics are left bewildered by his methods, Ennerst quietly powers a village, changing lives with his hands and his heart. His inability to speak English is, in many ways, his greatest strength, allowing him to think beyond the boundaries of conventional education and see possibilities others might miss. It frees him from the constraints of mainstream thinking, giving him the courage to experiment, to fail, and to try again until he finds his own solutions. Ennerst is a conduit for knowledge from the universe itself, drawing inspiration from the stars above and the earth beneath his feet. He reminds us that there are other ways of knowing, ways that blend tradition, intuition, and innovation into something truly powerful. He speaks energy, the native tongue of the universe, a language that needs no translation and connects all living things. His message is clear. True intelligence is about listening deeply to the world, to the wisdom within, and to the silent stories that energy tells us every day. Inventor Ernest Andrews Innovation largely aims to save money villagers spend in buying torches and batteries to light their homes. After realizing that we were facing a lot of problems without using electricity, I thought of trying to make electricity. Now here we are. The 18-year-old secondary school dropout says his generator produces 1,000 volts of electricity. He has now connected nine houses from a self-made transformer. This system generates electricity using air. To make a light bulb illuminate, I use power stored in bottles. I experiment with magnetic power to determine how much electricity I can produce. After that, I generate power based on the number of houses I want to supply. But experts complain of Andrew's failure to articulate how he is using air to generate electricity, or they say he might be purposely concealing it to prevent others from coping. What type of air is he using? We don't know. What air is doing to produce the power? We don't know. And he's not saying. How is he taking the air into his system to produce uh, electricity? We don't know. And he's not explaining. So how can we appreciate how can we assist as engineers? Katumba said if he proved real, Andrew's innovation would be rated among the most extraordinary in the world. The innovation has convinced skeptical neighbors. I was among those who were doubting his ability to generate electricity, which we can use in our homes. But when I saw that he had managed to connect his parents' house, that's when I asked him to connect my house too. Now life is simple. The villagers use the free electricity to charge phones and plug in electric shaving machines. Andrew's mother, Evelyn Chinguo, says he dropped out of school in 2018 because of lack of school fees. I am appealing to well-wishers to assist this boy to continue with his education, like sending him back to school to improve his innovative ideas because the knowledge he is using now is inborn. Minister of Energy Ibrahim Matola recently expressed appreciation of the invention. Such innovations can make us achieve access to electricity, but not only access, affordability, sustainability. Authorities in Idowa district donated training, electric wires, protective wear, and a gadget for measuring electricity footage. One thing that we're going to do as a district uh, to make sure that he's, uh, whatever he's doing when he is working on uh, the appliances is safe. The Malawi government has organized a group of experts and identify areas to assist. In the meantime, Andrew is working to connect the entire village and fulfill the government's request to illuminate the nearby public primary school.
Lamek Masina VOA News, Doha District, Malawi. Ernst Andrew stores raw electrical power in plastic bottles, a feat that defies known technological paradigms. He uses a simple combination of sand and other materials, creating a storage device from trash. This innovation challenges the multi-trillion dollar battery industry. Witnesses, including engineers, are in disbelief as they see him power devices with these bottles. Ernst's technology is simple, elegant, and seems like magic. It forces us to question what else we don't know. His bottles echo ancient knowledge like the Baghdad battery. Ernst's genius lies in seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary. Imagine a world where every household creates its own batteries from trash. Ernst has laid the foundation for a sustainable, decentralized energy future. Ernst's story is captured in a simple, powerful statement. Let me make electricity. This challenges the Western academic system, obsessed with theory over practice. Ernst wasn't afraid to fail. He had nothing to lose and everything to create. His success proves that imagination, connected to spiritual guidance, is greater than any curriculum. Our education system discourages this kind of thinking, rewarding conformity. Ernst is a glitch in that matrix, showing that innovation comes from an unshackled mind. The ability to make electricity came from creativity and ancestral connection. Ernst didn't need a professor's permission to be a genius. He demonstrated that true knowledge is the ability to affect change in the real world. His story is a call to action. Stop waiting for experts, connect with your inner genius, and create. If you made it this far, you're awake. You're not just watching another video. You're part of a rare group that sees beyond the surface, that questions, that dreams. You're not content to accept the world as it's handed to you. You're searching for something more, something real. You see the world not for what they tell you it is, but for what it could be. You see the cracks in the old systems, the possibilities in the new. You see hope where others see only obstacles, and you know that change is not just possible, it's necessary. My name is Dr. Cool. I'm not just a scientist or a storyteller. I'm a believer in the power of people to change their own destinies. My mission is not just to tell these stories, but to join the revolution. I want to be on the front lines, working alongside visionaries and dreamers, building the future with my own hands. I am dedicating my life and my resources to build a self-powered off-grid generator, inspired by geniuses like Ernst. This isn't just about technology, it's about freedom, about giving people the tools to shape their own lives. We will open source the plans, give the knowledge away for free, and help liberate humanity from energy slavery once and for all. Imagine a world where no one is left in the dark, where every community can power itself, where innovation is shared, not hoarded. This is bigger than one video, one channel, or one inventor. This is a movement. It's a call to everyone who's ever felt powerless to stand up and take action. It's a declaration that we are taking our power back. We are refusing to wait for permission, refusing to be told what's possible and what's not. If you feel that fire, if you believe in this mission, I need you to join me right now. This is your invitation to be part of something historic, something that will echo for generations. Type, I'm in with you in the comments below to show the world we are united. Let's make our voices impossible to ignore. Let's show the world that change is coming from the ground up. And if you are able, use the super thanks button. Every bit of support, no matter how small, helps us push this mission forward. Every contribution goes directly toward funding the research, development, and distribution of this freedom technology. Your support becomes tools, prototypes, and blueprints that will empower communities everywhere. Ernst. Andrew didn't just invent a device. He sparked a movement, a wave of innovation that's spreading across the continent and beyond. He invented a new era of thinking. He showed us that the greatest breakthroughs can come from the most unexpected places. He shattered the myth that progress only flows from north to south, from west to east. He proved that Africa is not just a receiver of ideas, but a generator of them. He has shown us that the future is not a handout to be given to the developing world. The future is something we build together, with our own hands, our own minds, and our own courage. The future is being built, right now, in the heart of the continent that has been exploited for centuries. Africa is rising, not as a victim, but as a leader, a creator, a beacon for the world. Africa is not waiting to be rescued. Africa is the rescue. The world's next chapter is being written here by people who refuse to give up. Stay curious, stay rebellious, stay awake. Let there be light, and let it come from within. The revolution starts now, and it starts with us.